All right, guys, we're off from Expedition Team Overland. I'm here with David with uh, Kimberly Trailers here in uh, Western Central Ohio, I guess. Bell Fountain, Ohio. Bell Fountain, Ohio. Uh, it's close to me, so I was able to make this as a day trip. And uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Dave so he can go over the two different trailers that they have here at his shop here in Ohio. All right, thanks. Um, so we're going to go over the two different trailers here. One is the camper and then also the caravan. Um, to start off with, so Kimberly Campers has been in business over in Australia for over 25 years. They recently had a change in ownership and now are expanding to uh, the U.S. So this is probably the first video that's been made here in the U.S. and uh, we'd love to share with you guys the, the campers here um, and just uh, show the different features and the different options. So we're going to grab the camera possibly here in a little bit and move around over the trailer. This right here though is the, the camper. Okay. So the camper is about uh, 17 feet long. Um, it's really low profile, which is nice. So it, you can actually, see when you're towing, you can see over the trailer easily. Um, what's cool about this camper is that there is gobs of storage and a phenomenal kitchen. I would put this kitchen and this trailer against any other camper on the market right now. Um, so <clears throat> I can get into some technical details here if you want to. Yeah, that's great. Okay. And then um, we're going to, in its closed state here, and then we'll take it over, we'll open it up to show you guys how it opens, and then we'll go over to one that we have uh, behind the camera here that's that's open. So on this side of the trailer, um, <clears throat> we have shower here, uh, where external shower, and you can use it with a wand or do whatever. There's an ensuite that goes to the, to the um, tent in the back over there. Um, you can plug in directly to city water if you want to through a hose or you can um, just fill it up and then there's dual tanks on board, about 60 gallons of water between the two tanks. Um, hot water, um, also we use a, a Wabasso diesel um, hot water on it and then um, also an option for a diesel cabin heater if you want to. Um, on this side of the trailer, inside here, I won't open it up until we get to the other trailer, but there's storage in here. Massive storage up on top here uh, with the um, box up here, front storage nose cone here also, and then there's, um, on the other side is where the kitchen is. Uh, you can put um, whatever uh, you want to put up here if you want to, so we you can put wolf packs up here, you can put um, chairs, you can put other things. We have several different options here. Um, one would be a, a tinny, was what they call in Australia, a boat carrier that flops over here and gets out of the way so you can open up the tent. We have an ATV carrier if you want to, so you can, there's ramps right up here and you can put an ATV carrier option on here. We have um, options on the back here with the swing away arm if you want to put a, a, a bike carrier on the back, if you want to put spare tire carriers, you can put dual spare tires on here, jerry can carriers, outboard trailer carriers, so a bunch of different options there on the outside. Um, other options are a winterization package. We have heating elements inside each one of the tanks with um, um, the tanks are insulated plus all the lines are insulated. So you can get that right around 20 degrees um, Fahrenheit um, without those lines, worried about those freezing. Independent trailing arm suspension uh, with the uh, um, airbags. Um, different options, you can have an auto, auto level if you want to. You can manual inflate, key fob in inflate or just uh, regular um, toggle buttons to inflate and level from side to side. Very, very well thought out um, suspension system here. In all reality, most Australian manufacturers have copied this system um, after Kimberly developed it. The chassis is hot dip galvanized steel. The rest of the body, I won't say the rest, but most of the rest of the body is aluminum or a different type of alloy metals here. So coming around front, um, we have an extended drawbar for um, easier towing and backing up and, and um, this particular one is the Kimberly Classic model, the camper model. It has hydraulic disc brakes that are by surge brake but on um, any other trailer besides this one they all come with uh, electric over hydraulic disc brakes, no drum brakes on any of our trailers. So the disc brakes are of super linear feeling compared to a drum brake. If they get wet they're going to still work. Um, just a far superior braking system than, than anybody else out there. Um, we have Anderson connector up front for your DC to DC charging of your lithium batteries. 
And then also this a regular seven-way connector for um, your exterior lighting. Um, this has the McHitch on the front. We have McHitch, a D035, if you want to do that. Or um, as another option, we also have the Treg coupler. So the three different options on the hitch depends on what you want. Um, awesome jockey wheel uh, made by Arc. Um, jacks up and down, folds out, rotates out of the way. You don't have to mess with taking the on or off or anything like that. It just it, it does its thing. It's super strong. Um, dual propane tanks. We'll get on the other one, but this opens up and has your kitchen area. We have all your cookers, and then you have your um, pantry and, and fridge and other things here. This is a slide-out kitchen, um, and we'll show that on the other unit here. And then also your pole storage for the different poles. Um, on the side here, we have um, inlets for shore power. Right here, it's a smart plug that we use at a, um, right here in the U.S. And then we also have your three-prong plugs to distribute power to outside here. Um, on board, uh, some of the electronics, there's a 300 amp hour lithium battery that's standard, um, DC to DC charging, and also AC to DC charging um, that comes standard on, on these models. Um, if you want to, you can option uh, either no inverter or a 2000 watt pure sign inverter. Um, so that's the outside of this trailer. Uh, there's one other thing in here. You can access storage underneath here. The, this is the bed on top here, but then you have all this storage that's underneath here um, to put whatever you need. Like uh, my wife and I and the kids, we actually have the plastic totes that we slide out and we put our dry goods underneath here to store for food. Um, so that is the outside of this trailer. Um, it's been around the block with our family. My wife and I, we have 10 kids. And people ask us all the time, like, how do you camp with 10 kids? Well... There's a queen size bed in here, and we're going to show you the other annex and other areas. My wife and I sleep on that bed. We stuff five to six of the minions in the um, on, uh, the actual extended bedroom and in the hard floor area here, and then we have four kids up in a rooftop tent. So that's how we camp um, with all of our children. So people ask, how easy is this thing to set up? Um, it couldn't get any easier, in my opinion. So you have a latch here latch here, and then you have um, these lockable um, latches here. And then this, this guy right here is um, assisted, hydraulically assisted. You take it, I'm just make sure I'm not going to hit any of my lights there. And you grab it. And you pull it over like that. You're going to take this part of the tent. And there's a spreader bar that goes in here, it spreads it out, and it's set. It's done. Okay? It's set up. And then reverse order of operation, you're going to collapse the tent back in here like this. I'm going to, basically, I'm not going to do the full thing, but you're going to pull it like this, back over, and this accordion's all down, and you just stuff it back in, and you're done. So, one, it's a one-person job if you want to. Two people make it that much faster, but as you saw there, it was open and then closed. So super uh, easy to do. We're going to jump over to the one that's open now, and then I'll show you all the different features of that. Okay, so we're going to go over wheels and tires really quick. Um, you can stuff underneath here a 35-inch tire. That's the largest that we can get. Bolt patterns, we're pretty variable, so um, standard is a... Um, 5x139 or you can get a 6x6.5 um, so it just depends on what pattern that you want so like I said you can get a standard 6x5.5 or the Toyota bolt pattern, a Land Cruiser bolt pattern um, is another option. We have within reason we have offset so we can try to match the um, wheel off or the track width of your vehicle so where, where does that come into play? Like it really doesn't matter if you're going down a gravel road or if you're going um, down the road, regular road, but when that comes into play is like in the desert sand or in the beach sand. Um, so if you have your track width of your trailer and your vehicle the same, you're not cutting new trails through the sand. Um, if you've ever experienced it where your track width is not the same, your trailer will will be wagging the dog. Like it will it will move you because it's trying to find the track that your your truck just um, cut, 
and um, it will it will not be a fun experience. So try to match track with the best you can, and um, within reason we can we can get that um, done. Uh, B BFG tires are standard on it, but in all reality, whatever tire you want on there, within the size realm that we have, we can put those on there for you. Okay, right. so we're going to go over the kitchen options here on the camper. So opened up this box here, um, which is our driver's side here in the U.S. Um, you have different options for lighting. You can go, um, you know, the different orange or white lights if, if you choose, um, just to light this area up. Um, as part of our electronic system here, we have uh, used a side marine. It gives you the battery indicator here. It also gives you... Uh, fridge temperature, freezer temps, DC charging from either our solar or the vehicle, battery consumption, things like that. You go down here, it'll give you drinking water um, um, level and then general water level. It'll give you shock temperatures. So when you're going over corrugations, um, you want to know your shock temps, and this will give you your shock temps. Fridge temps, it'll give you pitch and roll. So when you come to camp, you want to be able to level it, and it can tell you your pitch and roll, and then barometric pressure. Um, so that's just an overview of that system there. Webasto, um, diesel hot water. You have a, a Hella plug here with the USB plugs here, and different um, switches here to turn on your your water pump and things like that. Um, so this side, um, you have this slide out here, and then um, there's several different options for cooking. Okay, this is um, what we call the wok burner. Huge BTU, you can cook a lot of stuff here, boil water, cook stuff really fast. And then um, this is the dual burner griller. Two burners here, and then there's a griller underneath um, that you can use to grill with. If you want to, you can get a Weber barbecue here, or you can get one of these here and another one here. So there's uh, uh, several combinations of, of cooking here. Um, around here, up top, you have um, pantry storage here, and then inside here, huge deep cavern here for more pantry storage and pots and pans or whatever you want to put there. We use an upright fridge freezer, 82 liter. Um, I prefer these because I'm not digging in my chest freezer to get in here. I guess I'm a little mixed. For chest freezer, they have a, a definitely a good application, high volume, easy to use, but the uprights, um, they are nice because you're not digging through stuff to get all the way to the bottom of anything. Fridge freezer, you will notice, and I'm sure there's people on YouTube that are going to comment, like the freezer is so small. Absolutely is way too small in my opinion. So we have an option on the other side for a 12 liter freezer um, that you can just use to freeze stuff with. Um, and then sliding out the kitchen here, um, we have this guy slides out. On this side here, you have your, you can you know, all your cutlery and stuff in here if you want to. Um, huge deep drawers right here for, um, we put all of our longer utensils and other stuff in here. And then paper products for when we were camping, I'll go in here. Other big things we put on like our saran wrap, whatever uh, aluminum foil things in there. There's also a fire extinguisher and then more um, storage in here for longer items. Hot water on demand. Here, well, not on demand, but the diesel hot water is here. There's a light here that you can use to broadcast light across the, the work surface here to be able to um, see what you're doing. And then on this side, this is one of our favorite options for the kids, is we have um, a bunch of little kids here. Um, and they need a place because they want to be here with mom and dad and be cooking and helping out. So this is low enough for them to, um, to sit at and to be helping out when we're cooking. Um, there's you know, little features like this you see, this little rack here you can hang your rags on um, to be able to dry when, after you're washing up. Um, so this kitchen right here has massive space here to prep with and to cook with. So you can cook over there, go back and forth between cooking and prepping. So in my opinion, one of the best kitchens out in the market right now. So on the front nose box here, same system um, as far as the tongue and everything, there is a difference here where this, this is the Platinum Edition of the, of the camper, and it has um, a Hydrostar. Um, it's electric over hydraulic for the disc brakes. Um, if you want to set your parking brake, for example, um, you're going to pump it up right here, and at the same time, turn that, and the emergency brake is set. Okay. 
um, airbag um, to level and stuff like that. There is a key fob here that you can press either inflate or deflate and that can um, um, move uh, or adjust the airbag up and down um, to level it when you're at camp. Um, there's jerry can holders on the side there and also a place here to um, strap down a generator if needs be. On the nose cone here, on the Platinum Edition, you have a um, 90 watt um, Merlin solar panel here. Um, and then up here is just massive storage. You can put all your tents and canvases and things like that. I didn't even go over the canvases, but I will here in a second. Um, up here um, for storage. Um, we can do, um, you'll notice that there are, uh, this has a little bit different paint job. We can do custom paint jobs to match your vehicle within a certain realm of colors. Um, but that's an option for the trailers. Coming around to our, the U.S. Um, passenger side, um, this is where that 12 liter uh, freezer can go, slide out here. And then inside here, there's um, probably a cubic foot and a half here of storage. And then you open this up, and this gives you another massive bay of storage area here for food or for gear, for whatnot, whatever you want to put in there. Um, fuse boxes are easily accessible here and here. This is the diesel um, supply for the hot water on demand and also for the cabin heater. Then a DC to DC charger from Enerdrive there. Um, same system over here where we have the, the showers um, and water dispensing and intake there. Um, our canvas is Australian canvas, super heavy duty and waterproof. Um, to get it waterproof, you do need to go through a couple of sessions of getting it wet and dry, getting it wet and dry, and then that will expand um, the fibers, especially where it's been sewn through, and then make it waterproof. Um, we were just out of the Outer Banks for a week, and after the, since it's a relatively new trailer, I went over there, it had not been in any rain, but it went through a couple cycles of rain and dry, and by the end of the week, we had no issues with any water. At all. But just something you guys need to do, you need to condition the canvas if you, if you do this. Um, around this side here, this one has one of the options. It's a swing away arm that swings away, away the back there. That's so you can put in whatever um, uh, bike carrier you want to do in here. And just, just um, when the trailer's closed, this will swing out and go around to the back of the trailer there. Probably um, somebody's going to ask, how do you condition the canvas? And I briefly went over that, and I apologize for not going into detail. So with the canvas, um, you can get a garden hose and, and do it if you want to, but really you're going to be out there for a long time. Just set up your trailer when it's wet, like raining outside, and let it get wet, and then, and then let it dry out. And then do that a couple times, cycle through that uh, three or four times, and then your canvas will be conditioned for the, the wet weather. Um, I don't do it with the garden hose because our water here is like drinking out of the welding bucket and shop class is so bad that we just don't, we don't use the water in our shop here for that. So um, rain is probably the best way to do it and the easiest way to do it. Um, so we have a couple options on awnings here. So this is the quick awning. It zips on in a couple of minutes and um, it's supported by um, these two arms here off the side of the trailer. You can, um, right now I have the ends folded under just um, because I didn't want, we obviously we can't put a stake in inside the um, co concrete here to hold it up. But if you wanted to, you can pull those out and you zip on a Bedouin extension. And what that is, is it's a couple fingers that come out <clears throat> and they will hold this. If you bury the, the if you stake that Bedouin down really well, we were in 50 mile an hour winds when that um, tropical storm came through um, uh, the East Coast a, a bit ago. And this thing was just fine. Like it held up just fine underneath here. So it's not going to rip down. As long as you just take it down, you're fine. Um, canvas noise, everybody asks about that. What about windy conditions and canvas noise? Um, it's going to be a little bit noisy. It's canvas. Um, and especially when you have this, it's like a broadside of a barn here. You know, it's going to be hitting that, um, the, the wind on there. But um, we slept through it just fine. It's just something that people ask about um, quite often. It's the canvas noisy. There is some noise, yes, obviously. Um, some other things on the outside here. Yeah, I do have an option for this this box here, which is just a it's it's a box where you can throw like recovery gear in or wet gear in. Just it's out of the trailer, dirty stuff that you want to put in there. Stainless steel box there. Um, let's walk inside here. What's what's a neat 
feature about this trailer is that you're never on the ground as far as sleeping. This, this was, as you remember, this was the roof when it was closed, but now it becomes the floor. Okay? And this floor is off the ground. So you're not climbing up on a rooftop tent. You're not in the ground um, outside here. So when there's critters or snakes or scorpions or whatever, spiders, you're, you're off the ground here and, at, and out of the dirt. And especially in wet weather, you're not sitting in the mud. Okay, um, so inside here, um, this area here is about six and a half feet long and about five feet wide, five and a half feet wide, okay? And when we're camping, we have several of our kids sleeping in this area, either in bunk bed cots or on the, on the, actually the hard floor here. And then we zip on an extra adder room that's on the back here. And then we stuff three or four more minions inside of there. Okay? And that's a great addition if you want more space out the back side there. Um, inside, on the other side here, we have a full-size, queen-size bed with an inner spring mattress. Very, very comfortable. Reading lights in the back there. There are two more 12-volt plugs in the back to plug in other devices if you want to. Um, you have windows on all four sides of the trailer to get breeze and uh, cross breeze through. LED lighting up on top here. There is a tropical canopy on top, so we have um, a layer of canvas here, and there's an air gap, and then another, another layer of canvas, and that um, drastically reduces the heating um, and the beating of the sun on the trailer, so it reduces the temperatures inside. Um, underneath here, um, there is a slide-out drawer here if you want that option. If not, you can get it without the slide-out drawer, and um, you can lift the bed, and there's hydraulic assist there. And underneath here is all the electronics, so you have your 3 and amp hour lithium battery, your AC to DC charging, and I'll grab that. Yep, yeah, got the light there. Your AC to DC charging. Um, you have a 2,000 watt pure sign inverter underneath there. And then just all the, the dead man switch for the battery and things like that. And then on this side over here, Webasto, um, it's the, the 2000 um, STC. Basically, it's the, uh, the air exchange heater here um, to heat this, this cabin area here. On the other side over here, we have toggle switches for you know, the different lights, um, USB plugs plus three prong plugs, so 120 volt, and then your inverter on here. You also have a Hella adapter here, <coughs> and then you have another USB plug. We do have a um, uh, heating blanket underneath the um, bed here to reduce condensation, so you can plug that in and it will reduce the con condensation on the, on, underneath your bed. Um, and then, the, like I said, this is the hard floor, has uh, commercial grade linoleum here. Um, and just a great easy space. If you want to configure it how you want to, you can put a table in here and have chairs in here if it's bad weather or put kids in here or however you want to. Just a, a great space to, to keep you out of the weather and to, and to relax and enjoy here. Also, you can put your pants on standing up. You don't have to lay in bed if you're in a rooftop tent or a small tent. Um, it's, that's, that's a nice feature. A lot of people ask, do I have to climb to get up into? There is a small step right here to get up into your bed. Not a big deal, um, but easy easy to get up in and out of. You're not climbing over your, your partner to get in and out of bed also. You can sleep north-south instead of east-west. All right, guys, so I'm going to go over some of the electrical here, not all of it. Um, a lot of people um, have questions of, hey, is this ready for the U.S. market? Is it 240 still? Is it 120? So... We already homologated everything for the U.S. market, so it's all 120, all 60 hertz, so it's literally, you don't have to do anything to anything to be able to have this plug into the wall from, um, if you want to charge it from shore power. Okay, so there's several ways to um, charge this trailer up from shore, you can either shore power, you can do it through the connector up front, through the DC to DC converter from your vehicle, or you can plug in solar. And they come with solar controllers, and they come in um, already with the DC to DC, so that, that's, that's easy. And also the shore power plug comes with it. All of our boxes, so all these storage boxes, come with LED lighting inside here, okay? So the LED lighting is all around the box, so at night you're not fumbling through. We do have an option also, we can do um, LED lighting all around underneath the trailer, so it um, lights up um, around the trailer and um, allows you... Basically, you're not tripping over, over things at night. Um, some other cool features that we have are 300 amp hours of lithium on these smaller trailers. On our larger trailers, we have up to 600, 900, whatever 
increments of 300 um, amp hours you want in lithium batteries. We use rely on batteries. We've had we have hundreds of those in the market, and we've had zero failures on those rely. So that we stay with those with that those batteries there. Um, the other, like I said, easy access to fuse panels if you ever need to. Um, everything's behind. There's a little, a couple screws there, so you're not fiddling and messing with them all the time. You don't really need to. Um, the Symarine on the other side, which is our window into the system, that is bulletproof also. It gives you all the all the information that you need to. Another little unknown feature that we have in the trailers is a device here. Um, it's called Waitai, and it does a couple things. It is a wireless controller to your lights of your trailer. So if you don't want to plug in through your seven way, for example, then um, you install the um, mating component into your vehicle. And then once you get close to it, it will sync up with this and that will control all your lighting and all your braking um, via Wi-Fi. It's also a theft deterrent system. So um, that has an accelerometer in there. And once it feels a rocking or a moving of the trailer, it will automatically lock up your brakes and then it will send out a, a horn noise and then also it has a GPS locator so it's an anti-theft device too that you can get that as an option. Um, some other neat little features that are kind of unknown. Um, if you've ever been off-roading with your trailer, you're going to break your seven-way connector. You're going you're gonna to either forget to attach it, it's going to drag down the road and break. So instead of having these permanently um, wired to the trailer, we have a connector up front here that you can plug it into super easy and if you ruin this this uh, dongle here you just replace this little end here um, as, a, as a, a replacement part. So super easy um, just a nice little feature that I personally have ruined several seven-way connectors because of getting ripped off or whatever from a stick or a rock or whatever. But with that you can easily replace it. Um, again up front you have your DC to DC charging here and then an extra solar port, port here and you can put up to 40 amps of solar through that. That's a pretty significant amount of solar if you want to put um, through there. Um, other electrical things, I know it's a brake item, but it's electric over a hydraulic disc brakes on it. Um, very linear feeling, very smooth. And then coming around, um, there's hella plugs on the outside of the trailer and also, um, so hella plug here, this is where your shore power is, and then you have your three prong plugs here um, for if you want to plug in a, a blender or whatever thing you want on the outside here. Um, other than that, it's a pretty simplified electrical system. All of our trailers are loomed um, automotive style. So we don't have, just have random wires being run through the trailer. They're all loomed up. They all have automotive connectors on there um, so that we don't get corrosion and um, failures in, inside the connectors. Everything's crimped, heat shrinked, and then loomed up. Um, and laid out in the trailer. So again, it's uh, take an automotive approach to our electrical system so that it's, number one, it's easy to fix, easy to troubleshoot, and there's zero failure, uh, or at least I can never say zero, zero failure, but there's significantly reduced failures when you do it that way instead of just running random wires. Um, but in summary, that's um, the camper. Uh, super, super easy to set up, take down, amazing kitchen area and wherever a lot of people ask like, where can I take this where do you want to go so if you want to go off-road a fire roads no problem that's I mean we these things have been in, in um, Australia for camper version for almost 25 years they've gone across the Simpson desert they've gone thousands and thousands of miles across corrugations and they hold up just fine um, you want to go rock crawling with them yeah you can but why would you go rock crawling with, anyway, you can if you want to. Um, uh, there's enough bash plates and enough protection underneath to keep stuff from getting broken. Um, it's designed for that. So wherever you really, wherever you want to go, you can go. Um, I'm not going to advertise this, but we've had water up to here on them. And they're dry inside. Okay. So, like, you can, uh, when you get the water high enough, they start to float um, from experience. So just... Uh, wherever wherever you want to go, you're you're not limited. Um, 
that pretty much sums up the camper. Hopefully we were able to answer all your questions that you had. Um, if, and if you don't, um, you can email the guy behind the camera. And uh, or um, it will be on his YouTube. And uh, we can hopefully answer all the questions there. All right, so we get a couple questions about the McHitch. And I know there's not a lot of information out there. So probably one of the simplest hitches to hitch up. Um, it has this long shank here, and then this is the receiver side here. Um, and basically, when you're backing up your vehicle, you just kind of need to get it in the area, and then you're going to put it in here. And I don't have enough force because I'm not backing up, but um, once you, um, it's not connected to a vehicle, but once you get it in here, this just locks down automatically, and you put this pin in through, and you're done. And then likewise, when you want to decouple it, as soon as you get your trailer where there is, you're going to use your jockey wheel to um, jack it up. As soon as you get your trailer to where there's no force on this, this little pin opens up, and then you can open this, and it comes right off. Okay, so super easy. Like I said, I don't have. A, I'm not backing into it, but when you when you back into this, this is going to lock in, and then when you're coming off, as soon as you get no force on here, it just um, decouples, and you're ready to go. Um, so that's the McHitch. How much articulation does it have? 360. Yeah, it's all degrees of freedom. So this will rotate in any degree of freedom that you want. Okay. Um, all over the place. And then the other one is a DO35. So this guy right here. Um, I don't have this tight on here, but this one's pretty simple too. You're going to back up your vehicle. You're going to lower your trailer down. And then this is going to snap in on here and then lock in like that. Okay. Also pretty simple. It's just a little bit different where you have to be exactly over it. Whereas with that one, you just kind of be, with the McHitch, you just have to be, in general, near the hole. And uh, back it up in there, and then you're fine. Pros and so, cons to either one? Um, no, it's just a matter of preference. I, either one of them will, will um, serve its purpose, and will do what, what needs to be done. Um, probably for the less skilled backer upper, I would go with the McHitch. For the more skilled one, then the DO35, but either one of them, it's, they're, they're both great hitches um, here for the, for the off-road market. Okay, so we're going to shift gears here. We're going to go to the model that's up from the, Kimber uh, the camper, and it's called the Kimberly Caravan. Um, uh, just as a note, there are three other models above this. This is, like I said, the Caravan. There is the, the Cruiser models, which start with the E, the S, and the T-Class. The T-Class is the tandem axle. The E is the smaller one, and they just go up incrementally in size from there. But we're going to go over the caravan right now. So as you see it right now, it's in its um, stowed state, so in its down state. Um, I do have the steps out, but these steps fold up and go underneath there. We're going to do walk around on the outside, and then um, we'll show you how to deploy it, and we'll go from there. So um, on the outside here, this the whole trailer, the top canopy here is a dual skin um, insulated fiberglass. So um, outer skin insulation and then inner skin on it. Um, super efficient for energy conservation and just keeping you warm when you need to be warm and cool when you need to be cool. Um, we have standard up on top. There is uh, 400 watts of solar. If you don't get the air conditioner, you can get 620 watts of solar. Um, on the Eco Suite, which is this model, it's the upper um, model of the caravan. There's a classic version in the Eco Suite. Eco Suite has standard air conditioner on it. Um, heat pump op, uh, also on it. Um, so I'm just going to walk around. We're going to do some of the different options here. This is a, a quick awning that we have. comes out, covers the whole area on the outside here. You can get options for sidewalls and, again, for the um, bedroom awning that we talked about on that, on that other trailer there. Um, you can get an option for a Fiamma awning, which is a quick awning. What's neat about this is that there's a sail track on this side, and you can order the sail track on the other side. And if you want to... Um, depending on your use application, sometimes people are camping um, where they're going from spot to spot to spot. Every day they're moving. And when you do that, you don't want to set up an awning that's going to, you got to anchor down and do all that other things. That's where you get the, the uh, Fiamma awning. You can stow it on this side if you want to and use it and deploy it. Well, let's say the next day you're going to, uh, the next three days you're going to be in one location. That's fine. You can slide this awning out flop it with the other awning on the other side and put the other awning over here and use the longer um, uh, like the longer stay awning on this side here. 
So you can, like I said, you can move on each from side to side. It's literally like two little screws. You slide it out the back, you slide it back in on the other side, and you're ready to go. It takes uh, all of two minutes to do it. So some some um, neat functionality there if you're depending on your use case. Um, on the outside here, again, we have you can put 35 inch tires on here, wheel pattern, bolt pattern, um, and offset and things like that. Just um, you'd have to notify us what you want. We can within a certain realm we can we can do those options there for you um, with it being fiberglass it's super easy to clean easy to maintain it withstands the sun um, very durable um, if you didn't know all semi truck cabs bodies and everything are made out of fiberglass because they can go millions of miles without fracturing like some metal will will um, begin to fracture and fatigue but the fiberglass will not um, it's basically same build techniques we use um, come from the, the yachting industry. Around back here, two more solar panels here. And then on this other side is pretty plain, but this is just, uh, you have windows and things here um, to be able to see out and get ventilation and things like that. On board here, about 60 gallons of water, dual tanks. Um, what's neat about, I didn't go over this, but on the, on the caravans, why do we have dual tanks? We have dual tanks and dual pumps on the caravans. The reason why is, if you want to suck water out of a dirty, um, like a dirty pond or something like that, you can isolate your two water systems and you can use just pure drinking water in one tank and that will feed the, the drinking water out of the sink in the kitchen and the one, um, the inside kitchen and the outside kitchen. And then for general use water like showers or um, other bulk items, then um, bulk washing, you can use the contaminated water and it doesn't cross contaminate the systems. Um, so that's why we have two, two tanks, two pumps, two separate lines to those systems then. And you can switch in between if you want to. If you want to keep them all clean, then you can run all clean water. It's fine. Um, you can uh, raise and lower it from the uh, airbag suspension. Like I said, you can get auto level, you can get manual level, you can get key fob level, whatever you want to, to be able to do that. Um, when we go inside, you're going to see um, there is an indoor shower and indoor toilet. There is a small gray water tank on here just to hold that water if it needs to be. Um, Coming around the front here, dual jerry can holders. Uh, just rock guard here, and we um, uh, rhino coat the front here um, to be able to protect from rock, chip, rock chips and stuff. You also have your diesel um, a tank here for your hot water and also for your, um, if you get an interior Webasto cooktop inside. Okay. Same draw bar, it's on uh, all of our trailers up front here electric over hydraulic braking system, the arc um, type of uh, jack uh, jockey wheel there. Um, up front here, um, it's the cargo carrier. You can put wood up here. You can put your chairs, whatever, and, th and things up here. It's an option. We do have another option for, um, we get a ton of requests for bike racks. So there is a custom bike rack that a company out of Australia called ASI, they make for us. It bolts on here kind of has a little gooseneck that comes up here and your bikes will sit up in this area. What's neat about that, you can tilt it down, put your bike on, tilt it back up, or you can take that whole system off and it will slide right into the receiver of your vehicle. And so if you want to leave your trailer there but you still want to take your bikes right with you, fine, take them off, slide that right into your receiver. It's a dual purpose. You can use it on your vehicle or you can use it on the trailer. So inside here, um, DC to DC charger from the vehicle to the trailer. Um, airbag system up here. I'll probably be loud if I turn it on, but um, you can turn it on here and then activate um, through your key fob to, to adjust this up and down. Um, dead man switch for the batteries, and then hidden behind you here are two 300 amp hour lithium batteries. Standard is th uh, th 300 amp hours, but you can get a secondary one for a total of 600 amp hours. Um, again, the white tie system over there, more of another fuse um, box inside there, and then just um, Places to, to put a generator in or other other types of storage up here um, Just easy access to get to this area here walking around the other side You have your propane tank holder here for a 20 ground 20 pound propane tank US spec it goes in there um, and That's I'll go over a couple of the things on top here. I guess so the you have two fantastic fans here um, One's right over the shower that's on the inside and then one's on the other side where you can open up your rear windows and then pull a draft through or you can uh, reverse the fan and, and blow cool air in and, and blow it out of the trailer. 
positive pressure cabin system up top. And um, there's that other little white box that people ask about. Um, this is just a radio antenna. We have several options for communication types of systems. If you want a 4G type of cellular um, system up here, it comes standard in the eco suite. Um, if you want to add a ham radio, whatever you want to add, we can add the extra wiring here from the factory and your antennas to send it to us. We'll get it over to Australia and we'll get those installed um, to be able to do whatever comp systems that you want, ham or whatever, whatever it may be. Um, so pretty flexible on that. Um, what we're going to do now is um, we're going to show you how it opens up and, um, and just how easy that is. So around the outside, there are, and I already have them lifted up, but there are um, six latches, okay, so three on each side. Two that hold the trailer down, and then this back one holds the back of the clamshell down. Before you do anything, though, there are two items that you need to do. You need to put the stabilizers down, okay? You don't put these stabilizers down since the rear of the uh, lobster tail comes out. You're going to do a, a wheelie on the, on the trailer if you don't put those down. Um, the other thing is just this door needs to be open and just bungeed back here. The reason why because this is going to be sliding up and down and this inside latch here will catch on here if, you, if you're passing this area. Okay. Um, you're going to open up this back lobster tail here and there's a couple things that need to be undone here so there's a barrel latch here that needs to be open and then another barrel latch right here you see that and you're gonna swing this out and then there's one last one here that you're gonna open up and pull down okay okay so now that we're back here we'll, we'll just um, go over the the rear the boot as they call it in Australia I call it the trunk but um, you have inside here, you got your pull storage, you got your 120 outlet here, you have your inlet to your shore power over here, and you also have an external shower here um, where you can put um, pump in your drinking water here for that tank, or you have your two other tanks over here for non-drinking water. Or, or, excuse me, for, yeah, for drinking water over here and non-drinking over here, excuse me. Um, you have your short um, power charger there, and then you also have um, your solar inputs over here for the solar panels that are up on top. So inside here is a switch. Uh, kind of weird thing about Australia, maybe worldwide, I don't know, but for them, their switch to on is down. But for the US, everything is up. So that's a learning curve that we've had to just uh, note here. Um, so you're gonna, uh, that activates the mechanism that's going to lift the trailer up and then there's an in and out press in for when you're going down and out for when you're going back up so pretty easy you just press this button these are the sidewalls that when you're up um, are going to be expanded out this naturally so how it's designed is that when the trailer goes down it nests these sidewalls together automatically you don't have to mess with it they're spring loaded so that they go they, they nest back out, so and back in. I'll keep on going up. And just like that. So that exposes this whole area here. You gotta understand why the sidewalls slid out here, um, or slid up because we're gonna push the bed out towards the back here. Pretty simple procedure to do the bed. Here, um, there's a latch on this side that we're going to latch up, and there's a latch over on this side that's up. And basically, you're going to take this, and we're pushing this out okay, until it nests into that back area there. And then you push that lock down, and it's locked in. Okay, so that. You just set up your bed. You're ready. You're ready to go to sleep if you want to. Um, this trailer has an option for a bunk bed. Okay, so um, couples can sleep up there if you want to. You bring your minions along, and the kids can sleep um, bunk bed style here. This, um, these three pins go in the back three pins here, and that's your top bed, and then your bottom beds underneath. Right. Now, I'm not going to set that up right now, but um, if you're not using a bunk bed, 
then this is going to fold into up into that space there, and then it latches on the back to, to um, restrain that. Here is the other seating arrangement here. There is storage underneath here. Big old um, area for storage here. I just have some odds and ends in there. There are pull-out drawers here for more storage. Okay, so I'm um, going over a little bit of electronics on the inside here. Um, underneath the bed, there's a membrane heater to keep um, any condensation out. Um, let's go to the bed real quick. So inner spring mattress here. Um, but down here, you have two Hella plugs um, to plug in things, and then you have your um, diesel hot water heating, and then also your diesel um, ducted system here for air heating. Um, you do have an option for two heaters. There's a heater here. Um, basically, this this heater here is a it's a remnant of the hot water system. Hot water system. So we're, since we're using a diesel hot water heater, that um, has a lot of extra power in it and so it uh, harness on that power to use to heat the cabin we just put a heat exchanger here with the fan on it and you can use that it's just basically a byproduct of the, of the water heating system if you want more heat than that I would highly recommend from a um, if you're in colder areas is to get the ducted um, heater because that will keep this area nice and toasty um, if you don't need a ton of heating also the air conditioner has a heat pump on it and that can uh, provide heat also um, so there is a little toggle switch here, and that turns on your tank heaters when you get the winterization package. Um, so when you're sitting here, this whole area is um, inside out, and it forms a table here for you to sit on. Not sit on the table, but to eat on and to use um, and be able to type with or, or work, from, work from your trailer instead of work from home. Um, and then just, just slides, out of the, slides out of the way here. Okay? Um, we have made some changes um, from this one to the new models, um, and I'll go over some of those changes. Um, this um, is no longer stainless steel sink. It is actually an integrated sink with the Cori on top here. So it's all integrated and molded in one piece sink. Over here, we have a couple different options. Um, you can get a diesel um, cooker inside here, Webasto diesel cooker, or you can get an induction cooktop up, up there also. And so those are your two options for, or you can get nothing if you don't want to. If you want a portable induction, that's fine. We found that induction heats up really fast. Um, and you can, um, you can put stuff on it. It's not going to burn all the time. Um, so that's, that's been a really, a really good feature for us to add the induction cooktops. I don't have any cooktops in this trailer. This one didn't option for it, but again, you can have those options. Um, hot water, cold water in here. Um, more storage in here, so you have these drawers of different things in here. Um, just to store your different things. Um, cutlery and stuff in here. Um, this is an 85 liter fridge here. Upright, huge space in there um, that you need. If you do want more fridge space, we can option for more fridge um, outside. And I'll show you that here in a bit. Um, microwave is an option. Has under the cabinet um, lighting here, so if you just want to keep that light on in the evening time, that would probably a light to be able to see everything that you need to. Um, diff different switches for the different items here, and again, the side marine over there um, for the control, uh, or I guess the window into all the electronics of the trailer. Um, standard on these are a 3000 watt pure sign inverter um, that should be able to handle everything you need. If you're using over 3000 watts in a trailer, you should probably should just stay home. Um, I shouldn't say that, but I did. Um, so this is one of the innovative features of a Kimberly camper. So this area here is the bathroom area. Um, from an uh, enclosed shot here on the top, there is, um, in this area, this is a nature's head composting toilet. Okay, so um, the key to these, and let's go over it really quick, um, is... Um, there's two ports here. One is for the number ones, and one's for the num and this other one is for the number twos. That's the key to be able to compost and separate and not have any smells. So uh, yes, guys, you got to sit down when you got to go to go to the bathroom. But um, your number ones go in this um, area here, and depending on how much uh, water you consume, you're gonna have to empty that more often. But the number twos, um, you can get about 80 uses out of this um, system. It has a um, vent to the outside that's a powered vent that we use and then an agitator on the side that you have to agitate every once in a while. So that's your composting toilet. 
We have other options for your toilet, but this is the composting one. Um, this is standard in this unit. Super cool about this here is that when you want to take a shower, you just lift up this little lever, you put this and latch it back in there, you grab your wand, and it sticks back up to the top here. You're going to fold this out of the way, and that's your splash guard, and then there's a curtain that goes up here. You can take a shower and um, be clean when you need to, because every once in a while, even though all the hardcore people out there camping, it does feel good to have a shower every once in a while, especially um, my significant other likes to take a shower and be clean. Um, so this is a great um, use of a dual use of space where when you're not using the shower, you have the toilet right here and just swings out of the way. Um, fan up above to extract any um, uh, moisture from the shower. Um, and then also fans over here. And these are just reversible, fantastic fans, so it can go either way. Positive pressure cabin system right up here to um, pressurize the, the system um, when you're driving down the road. Um, some other neat features here. So up front, um, uh, built in like a Bluetooth um, sound bar there. You can get a TV option if you want to. And there's just other areas to store stuff in here. Um, all of our lighting, or most of our lighting, in here is just um, touch lighting. So touch LED lighting, um, there's four in here, and then we have another light over here, over your cook area, if you want to cook in this area here. Um, lined with um, kind of a, like a felt material, just to keep condensation down. Um, and then in the back area, we don't have the lights on back there, but there are some um, reading lights in the back that you can um, use um, to light up that back area there. Okay, one of the other neat features about a Kimberly is that um, especially the caravan, you can cook on the inside or on the outside. Um, I personally don't like cooking so much on the inside because you get all that stink inside, but um, I like outside cooking. Um, so on the outside here, um, this, this is one of the several configurations of the kitchen. So over here, you have a slide out dual, dual burner with a griller underneath. You can get a dual, a dual wok burner to these. We can have one here and then one slide out underneath. Or you can get a um, Weber barbecue here if you want to, and then a, a cooker. So there's, there's several different options here that you, that you can get. Um, you have storage space up here for spices and food and all that stuff up here. Um, you have your hot water here. More storage area underneath here. This area is also accessible from underneath the seat on the inside. So if you have food that you want to get from the inside of the trailer, you can still op open up underneath that seat and get into here. And then you have here um, your fold-out sink and prep area here. So full sink here. You got storage for um, longer utensil items and um, cooking items here. And then a big deep, deep storage area here. And then you have cutlery area there and then a, a prep space here so if you wanted to if you're really cooking you can put this burner out here if you want to another burners here and just have a big area for cooking from a balanced towing perspective you won't even know these trailers are behind you they're so well balanced and so well um, and thought out that um, going around curves going around um, you know if you need to avoid something on the road, they just, they'll avoid it and they'll go back to a stable state. Like there's no swaying, there's n none of those things that you experience with other types of trailers. And they're just uh, very well, well balanced trailers. Um, so that, this is again, the, the version that I went over here, because a lot of people ask, this is the Eco Suite, has a bunch of different options that the classic version doesn't have. Um, I won't discuss pricing because there's so many different options in here, there's a large swing in pricing. Um, but you can go to our website and you can check that out um, or email us and you can get the pricing on, on all the different models here. All right, Dave, so where would you see both of these mark these trailers in the U.S. market? Okay, so they are two different animals. All right, so the, the camper is more for the person that's going to be a weekend warrior or one to two to three week trip. So they're not living out of it because um, it's just over time, I think you'll find that you want a little bit more creature comforts. Not that there's not a lot of creature, 
creature comforts in the in the camper. Um, but it's not. I wouldn't recommend it for long term living. We get that question asked all the time, especially now. People are looking to go to live full time in it in a trailer. I would not recommend the camper for that. Um, so weekend warrior guys that want to go out, like you want to hit all the gravel roads out there, all off road, like wherever you want to go with that trailer. Yeah, out west, there's a ton of um, your land management uh, land out there that you can use. Um, east, it's a little bit more restricted. Um, they lock down a lot of that stuff, but there still are a lot of great campsites and a lot of off-road trails that you can go with out east. Um, the camper would be fine in any of those any of those areas. Now, the caravan, I'd feel comfortable with people that want to go for longer term out. So if they want to be out one, two, three months, it's a, it's a camper that you can live in. Um, it has you know, inside and outside cooking if you want to. Um, just a lot more amenities inside, a little bit more space to, to stay inside with. Again, this trailer can go anywhere you want to take it. Um, if you want to go across that river to where that campsite is that nobody's at, do it. You know, um, obviously, don't get stuck in the river. But uh, so I think they're they're highly versatile. Long term stay definitely this one. Short term, do the camper. Now our other models, the cruiser models. You could live your life in those. Like they are, in fact, we have customers that buy those that their goal is that's their new home. So um, look at the cruiser models if you're going long, long, long term type of stay, like you know, full timers as they call them. That's what I, I'd recommend the, the cruiser class. Now, what about uh, vehicles to tow with? That's a loaded question, no pun intended, <laughs> right? So I can't tell you how many times I get um, Jeep guys, and don't hate me, Jeep guys, I have a Jeep also. Um, but the Jeep guys, they want, they want to tow whatever they want to tow, and they don't care what it weighs. But I would highly recommend both Jeep and Toyotas. Um, they're not designed for towing. The Tacoma, yeah, it's a truck, but it's, it's terrible at towing. Um, unless you do some certain things to it. Stiffen up the rear suspension. You can either do that with uh, like an old man emu suspension, or you can do it with airbag suspension. Whatever you need to do, you need to stiffen up that rear end for towing. If not, you're going to be dragging your butt down the road. Um, with whatever trailer, it could be our trailers or any other manufacturer's trailers, just on a t Tacoma especially, and any of the Jeeps, minus the Gladiator, any of the Jeeps, you got to stiffen up that rear end. Even Gladiators have a, st uh, have a loose rear end. The reason why, it's built for off-road, right? So they need to have that articulation there. Um, so go with what the manufacturer recommend legally. I'm not going to say go ahead and tow a 5,000-pound trailer with a 2,000-pound tow capacity vehicle. That's stupid. Um, so just follow what the manufacturer recommend. You will have to do some modifications if you have certain types of vehicles. Um, Off-grid living. Uh, how long does a water tank last on the camper and, and this one behind us on, on, for an average use? For an average use. So, um, for example, um, we have an abnormally large family. So my wife and I, we have 10 kids, as you know. Five girls and five boys. Yes, they all are. They're all of ours are ours. No adoptions, no twins. Um, my wife's a saint. But so we were out at the Outer Banks last week for a week, um, and we went through basically all of our cooking. Not our drinking water. We brought our own drinking water, but cooking, cleaning, all that other stuff, showers, um, with basically the the water that was on board the camper. Um, we did replenish it at the very end just to make sure I didn't run out of water when we were in the middle of showers for the kids and stuff. Um, so uh, from a quantitative perspective, um, it highly depends on what you're using it for. Like, are you taking a shower every single day? If you do, you're going to blow through your water very quickly. But if you're using it for cooking and, and just washing up your dishes, you can be out for a week or so, and then you'll need to replenish your water. Um, we, we typically don't drink out of the tanks in any of our trailers just because sometimes we maintain them, sometimes we don't. So we'll just bring bottled water or, or a big jerry can of water with us. We use that for drinking water. Uh, that, does that answer your question? Yeah, no, that's perfect. Now, what about for the fuel? With the you on the on the campers, you carry two 20 gallon, uh, 20 pound propane, propane tanks, system. and then the diesel. How long on? Yeah, you know, just for average cooking and, and and for heating and stuff like that. So if you're doing um, for the propane, if you have two 20 pound propane tanks, you could last for a long time on that with our cooking. We went through about 10% cooking for a week for 12 people. That's your average home grill. Yeah, like you're at your, it's, you can go forever. Like, like a home grill, like you really have to fill up that tank, right? So um, 
that's a propane side. Now the diesel side, they also sip the diesel. Um, a five gallon jerry of diesel will last you probably a month worth of heating um, interior wise, hot water, and then cooking um, easily. We can get through that. But again, it's a it's a use case. As an engineer, I can't give you like, hey, this is what it is. But on, solid. Yeah, maybe about a, like, on average, if you're conservative with what you're doing, then uh, it depends on the outside temperature yeah. and all that type of stuff. And another thing you asked about about off grid living um, is the solar on that we have on either of the trailer. So we have the, the camper doesn't come with a lot of solar standard, but you can get portable panels that we manufacture here in the U.S. Um, and you can augment your solar with that. If you have solar. Two of our portable 160 watt panels, you literally, if you have good sun, you can live indefinitely with enough power off that. Um, with this guy, I didn't explain, but a um, unique feature about the caravans and the T-classes is that um, there's enough solar on there, and if you're conservative enough, um, you can run your air conditioners off of the batteries, for the air conditioner off the battery for several hours. And you'll need to shut it off and then have the solar recover the power on there. Um, but there's a good chunk of solar up on top there. You can augment it with portable panels. Um, but you can, on the bigger T-classes, you can basically be off-grid for a really long time without having to plug in if you are not in Washington State or Oregon where it's super rainy and cloudy, but you're out in the sun. The solar will recover all that. Um, maintenance. R r routine yep. maintenance and upkeep and stuff like that. For probably the person who uses it, you know, maybe uses that trailer four or five times a year versus someone who lives it a year round, there's going to be different wear and tear items, but yep. general maintenance. So general maintenance, um, like you said, the use case of how you're using it um, for the canvas trailers, so the, the, the campers, um, you want to keep your canvas, um, don't spray bug spray around it, it ruins canvas, okay? And like DEET especially is just terrible on, on canvas. When you do get it dirty, wash it off with just water and a, and a rag and mild, a mild soap, and then don't store it wet. Like if you're camping when it's wet, open up at home and dry it out before you put it back away. Um, I don't care what people tell you, everything will mold if it's wet. Okay? And you're never getting the mold out. And you're never getting that mold out. Um, other maintenance, um, service the axles every 12,000 miles, repack re the grease on them. Um, go through and, and um, on your tank systems, drain them if you're not going to use it for a long time. Don't let water stagnate in there. Blow all the, those systems out. Water breeds bacteria and other things. So um, keep that keep that stuff clean. Um, in general, just um, go through, check nuts and bolts, check your wiring, just, just general maintenance stuff. There's not a lot of maintenance on these trailers. Do you need to leave it plugged in? No. No, you can turn off the dead man switch um, on the batteries and, and just um, that will shut everything off on the system. Um, if you want to leave it plugged in, that's fine. Our system can handle that also. Um, on the ones that have solar panels on them and you can leave it out in the sun, those solar panels will maintain your your battery system when you're when you're storing it, so you don't you don't need to plug it in. Um, on these guys, there's a little bit um, different um, things. Like technically, you can leave your number twos in the um, in the toilet in there because it will compost down. It might stink if you don't have the vent on, but you could leave it on in there. I highly recommend you get rid of your number ones because uh, those will stink and just spray it down with some vinegar, and that will um, neutralize any of the any of the smells there. Um, just, just general stuff. Keep stuff clean. Don't leave salt water. If you're driving down the beach, come home and pressure wash it. That's the first thing we do. Whenever we're on the beaches or, in, or even going through on um, salty roads in the winter time, we'll get home. We'll pressure wash everything off and make sure everything's clean because salt will kill everything. More in northeast Ohio. Is pretty yes, sad. <laughs> if you're in the Rust Belt here, whatever they're putting down, the, the cancer they put on the roads here is just it's it's why well, we can't have nice things. Yes, yes. Never get married. Like never get. Fully involved in your vehicle because in three years it will be it will be rusty. Um, so um, other maintenance, um, of course, leave your fridge um, off. Or if you're gonna, you can leave it off if you want to. But um, if you're gonna leave it off, leave it cracked open so the mold doesn't go in there and it gets um, that smell inside the fridge smell. Um, other than that, it's pretty low. What about the tent? Do you, can you leave it packaged up for a oh, couple yeah. months for the winter? Oh yeah, like yeah, no, no problem. problem. Yeah, the, the campers, they're watertight in there, so if you have it all latched down, there's not going to, there's no issues inside there as far as uh, mold or, or any water intrusion or anything like that. Well, where would they find your information? Okay, so um, right now, I will readily admit, the website for Kimberly is being redone right now, so it's not very, not very there's not a lot of information out there. 
Um, but you can go there and you can submit online. It's KimberlyCampers.com.au or KimberlyCampersUSA.com. Um, the contact information there is the forms you can fill out. Either I'll get a hold of you or, um, well, I will if you're here in the U.S. If you're in any other part of the world, um, the Australians will get a hold of you and contact you there. Um, and we're happy to work with you. So um, the, all the trailers are highly customizable. And it's it can be a painful process if you let it be. But what we want to walk through, we're not, honestly, we're not selling you a trailer. We're, we are, we're selling you a lifestyle and a relationship. Like we're in it for the long haul to, um, with the customers. Call us up. We'll walk through any of the steps that you, um, you know, any questions you may have about the trailer, any options. Um, if you need to, we'll have a video call. And we, in fact, right before you showed up, we had a call with the customer and we walked through several of the trailers um, with him. Um, a lot of people ask, how does the whole transaction go with buying a trailer? So if I can cover that. No, I was just going to talk about like, the lead time. I call today and say I want to buy a trailer yep. from initial contact to delivery. What is? So most of the time, um, we are not Amazon. It's not two-day prime shipping. Okay. So um, there, um, some of the trailers we do have on the floor here that we can sell you. But since our, they are highly customizable, it's going to take a little bit of time. So right now we're about four to five month lead time on the trailer. Some of the big ones take a little bit longer. Um, the ordering process is super simple. Call us up, say, Dave, we want to learn about this trailer. I'll, uh, me or one of our guys will educate you on the trailer. And then we go through and we go through all the option sheets. We tick that off. We send that back to you. And you review it and say, yep, this makes sense. We'll send you a final um, invoice for it. And then um, that, once we get a deposit down, it's a 10% um, deposit. Once that's we receive that, we put you in the build schedule. Um, like I said, four to five months on the lead time. Um, throughout that build schedule, we'll give you um, pictures and um, updates of where your trailer is at. Once the chassis hits the floor, we'll take a picture of the chassis. And this is your chassis. Once it hits a certain milestone in the build, then we send pictures of those. And um, just to confirm, like, hey, yeah, everything looks right on this build, right? There's nothing that was miscommunicated or anything like that. Like, like if the customer ordered black, we didn't put brown in or something like that. Uh, like I said, like, there's 20 different leather choices you can get inside these trailers so just we got to get that all sorted out pickup and handoffs um, right now we are located in Ohio we are expanding our reaches out we will have eight or nine dealerships throughout the US to be able to support the customers like I said we are selling you a trailer but we're also selling you support and a lifestyle we want to support you that's that is our goal like after sales is actually more important than the sale itself for us we want we want to, we want to support you um, so we're finding key dealerships that have a reputation of being able to support their customers and setting those up. If you come to my shop, though, here in Ohio, um, we do a little bit of old school style here. You come in, we're going to teach you about the trailer, and we're going to go over everything. We're going to set it up, take it down, whatever whatever time it takes for you to learn it, we're going to take that time. You can videotape us during that time if you want to, and just so you have it for review. Then you come over to our house and eat dinner with me and my family. And we've done that as a custom over the last four years, and it works out really well because, like I said, it's a relationship that we have with our customers. Um, so you come over, you eat at our house, you meet all of our little minions, we have fun there, and then we send you back to the shop, and you sleep in your camper in our shop. And um, because most likely you're going to forget 90% of the stuff I told you that day. You're going to wake up in the morning, um, I'll come in, and we'll review everything that you have questions about. You're probably going to have a list. And um, we go over that, make sure you understand it, and then we send you, we pack it all up and send you on your way. For those that need training on trailer towing, we can offer that too. Um, we have access to some off-road trails, a um, little trail area here, and then we can do some of that uh, trailer towing with if you, if you request that. Um, so, again, we're in it for the long haul with the customers. Um, we have customers all across the nation that... Um, and like when they come into town here in Ohio, they'll come and stay with us or see our family or we'll go camping with them all over everywhere. So uh, just something that we pride ourselves in, in in our customer service. So pretty painless process. Just be patient. Um, I like to remind people we are not saving lives. In reality, it's just, just, it's just a trailer. So there will be hang-ups. Like there's certain things I can't control. I can't control pandemics. I can't control shipping. And um, but I can't control everything else. So if those things happen. It might delay the process a little bit or advance. It just depends. And just be patient with this uh, stuff. Does happen. We're not saving lives. Right? 
just to travel would be okay. Um, one other thing, I just thought of going internationally. You know, so obviously, you guys are probably going to go to, you know, Canada, Mexico, and yep. South America. Is are obviously built in Australia. Probably has they have some pretty strict rules. Any issues with taking this internationally? So the only hang up that I could foresee would be if you expect to plug in the shore power of some other country, because we're 120, 60 hertz. Most other countries are uh, either 240, 220, 50 hertz, or 110, 50 hertz. Depends on who built your grid. Um, so that would be the only thing. So to get around that, just bring a generator with you, and then you can just um, run your own system with that. Um, the Webastos will run off any type of diesel, so there's not any problem with uh, low sulfur fuel or anything like that. Um, but, and then propane tanks would be the other thing. So we have a little bit different fill port system than propane. So you just have to know and get the adapter for that mm -hmm. country you're going to go in and then go from there. Um, but internationally, no, we have these go internationally all the time. So it's, it's no concern. You, you got to be prepared okay. and know what, what you're going to do. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for taking a couple hours here and looking forward to it. And I'll put in the description below, I'll put all his all Dave's contact information and your website and all that type of stuff. And uh, we'll go from there. Awesome. I appreciate you guys coming down. All right. You have a great one. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.